If you're watching this video, my guess is that you are like me and you want financial independence. So if that's you, you might just appreciate the story of Ronald Reed. And yes, it has everything to do with dividend investing. So let's learn about Ronald, his investment strategy, and dive into the top nine holdings of his portfolio. Ronald was a Vermont native and the first in his family to get a high school diploma back in 1940. He spent five years in the army after graduation and when he returned, took a job as a gas station attendant and mechanic where he worked for 35 years. He retired at the age of 58, took a year off, then returned to work at JCPenney as a janitor where he worked for another 17 years. So what can today's investors learn from Ronald? Well, he was a steady worker, a saver, and an investor all his life, and he was able to amass a significant fortune. He didn't have a fancy job title, he didn't make a huge wage, but he was principled, steady, and consistent. He lived to be 92 years old, and this is the house that he lived in. And at the end of his life, he had built an investment portfolio worth over $8 million. Now let's talk about the principles that he espoused that allowed him such financial success. And they're really pretty simple. We need to live below our means spend our money mindfully. We need to read about and study the market and invest and make sure that those investments are diversified. We should only be buying things that we understand and invest in companies that pay a dividend and then reinvest that dividend. Plan to buy and hold those companies forever and be patient. It's estimated that Ronald invested in just about 95 different blue chip companies. And what you're looking at here is an excerpt from an article that was written in the Wall Street Journal, where Claire Johns, the executor of his estate, named the biggest holdings as of his death. And you can see here, those top companies were Wells Fargo, Procter & Gamble, Colgate Palmolive, American Express, J.M. Smucker, Johnson & Johnson, VF Core, McCormick, Raytheon, and United Technologies, which was merged to become Raytheon. This isn't get rich quick, it's get rich slow and using the power of compound interest to grow our investments over time. And Ronald lived to be 92 years old, so he had some time on his side. So let's take a peek at the largest holdings that Ron had in his portfolio. And we're gonna start right here with Wells Fargo and Company. And in today's dollars, it's presently trading at $47.55 a share. In the last year, Wells Fargo's down just a little bit over 6% and year to date, they're down 6.27%. They've got a forward PE here of 11.60 and a dividend yield of 2.52%. Looking at the dividend grades for Wells Fargo, we can see they've got a B plus in both safety and consistency, a B minus in growth, and a C in dividend yield. Now, seeking alpha notes here, we only have one year of dividend growth and a negative five-year dividend growth rate of negative 6.51%. Parent ratio is 23.53%, and again, that dividend yield is 2.52%. Let's look a little further at the dividend history so we can kind of uncover what's going on here. And you can see here, they've been giving a dividend payment for 23 years, but the growth has been a little bit limited within the last year. And here we can see why. In 2020, it looks like they did cut their dividend, but it looks like they've been slowly working to grow that dividend in the last couple of years. So hopefully that trend will continue for Wells Fargo. The number two holding in Ron's portfolio is the Procter & Gamble Company, ticker symbol PG. And in today's prices, it's trading at $140.97. In the last year, Procter & Gamble is down in share price 3.71%, and year to date, they're down a little bit more at 13.46% in price return. PE is 24.28, so definitely a little bit on the higher side for Procter & Gamble right now, and the dividend yield is 2.59%. Looking at their dividend scorecard, we can see we've got a B plus in safety, an A in growth, a C in dividend yield, and an A plus in consistency, because Procter & Gamble has been giving and growing that dividend for the last 66 years, which is really very impressive. If that price comes down, I might try to get a couple of shares. The five-year dividend growth rate for Procter & Gamble is 5.68%, payout ratio is a little on the higher side at 61.81%, and the dividend yield is 2.59%. Next up, and in the number three spot for Ron's portfolio is the Colgate Palmolive Olive Company. In the last year, they're down 4.39% on the price return, and year to date, they're down 11.85%, almost 12% on price. Looking at the PE, this one's also a little on the higher side at 25.04, and the dividend yield is 2.52. In terms of the dividend scorecard, we can see we've got a B in dividend safety, an A plus in both growth and consistency, and a C in dividend yield. We've got 59 years of dividend growth, a five-year dividend growth rate of 3.19%, and a payout ratio also a little on the higher side, but again, we've been given this dividend for 59 years at 61.54% and a 2.52% dividend yield. 
The number four spot in Ronald Reed's portfolio is the American Express Company, ticker symbol AXP. Trading at $154.89, you can see the last year they're down 14.57%. Year to date, they're down 7.92%. They've got a forward PE, a little bit more palatable than the rest at 15.58%, and a dividend yield, which is definitely on the lower side at 1.34, and I believe is the lowest of the companies that we're looking at today. Dividend grades overall, we've got an A- minus in both safety and consistency, a B plus in growth, and a D- minus in dividend yield. Here we're looking at one year dividend growth, so we're going to dig in a little further in just a moment and see what's going on here with American Express. We've got a nice five-year dividend growth rate of 8.72%, parent ratio is only 20%, and the dividend yield, again, on the lighter side at 1.34%. Looking at the dividend history, we can see that they've been giving this dividend payment for the last 33 years, but have only got one year of documented dividend growth. But expanding this to look at the last 10 years, let's take a little bit of a deeper dive here. And let's, let's look at the year 2020, and we were giving 43 cents a share, and that kind of remained flat for 2020 and 2021 into 2022. And now in the last couple of quarters, we have actually increased the dividend. The JM Smucker Company, ticker symbol SJM, trading at $142.61 is actually up in the last year by 13.11%. And year to date, they're up 4.25%. They've got a PE of 16.75. The dividend yield is 2.86. And looking at the dividend scorecard for JM Smucker Company, we can see we've got some pretty strong grades. We've got an A in both safety and consistency, an A minus in growth, and a C plus in dividend yield. Again, yields are on the lower side for some of these companies, and this one's just at 2.86%. We've got 20 years of dividend growth, a five-year dividend growth rate of 5.61%, and the payout ratio is 46.07%. Johnson & Johnson, ticker symbol JNJ, trading at $169.25 right about now. In the last year, they're up 3.8%. Year to date, we can see they're down 1.33%. They get a PE of just 16.85 and a dividend yield of 2.67 right now. And we all know Johnson & Johnson's got a pretty impressive scorecard. They were almost a straight A. They've got an A- minus in safety, an A+, plus in both growth and consistency, and a B plus in dividend yield. And Johnson & Johnson's a heavy hitter. We got 59 years of dividend growth here. Five-year dividend growth rate of 5.95%. Payout ratio is 44.06%. And they've got a dividend yield of 2.67%. Just three more companies to look at, and this next one is the VF Corporation, ticker symbol VFC. In the last year, wow, are they down on share price. Almost 56% in year to date. It looks like just almost 55%. The PE is only 13.81, and obviously with a huge drop this year in share price, we see that that dividend yield has definitely skyrocketed, and this is the highest among the companies that we're looking at today at 6.12%. In terms of the dividend grades for VFC, we've got a D minus in dividend safety, an F in dividend growth, and an A in yield, and an A plus in consistency. We've got 48 years of dividend growth, five-year dividend growth rate of 4.81%. Payout ratio is, I think, the highest among the companies that we're looking at, 76.34%, and the dividend yield, again, at 6.12% right now. Next up is McCormick & Company Incorporated, ticker symbol MKC, trading at $83.77. McCormick is at risk of performing badly. So before we go any further, let's find out why. The notes here are that McCormick is overpriced right now and has declining growth when compared to other consumer staples stocks. Let's take a peek at the PE. And we can see here that, oh yeah, it's overpriced. 31.33 is the PE. Dividend yield is only 1.77% for McCormick. Looking at their dividend grades, we've got Bs in both safety and growth, a D plus in dividend yield, and an A plus in dividend consistency. Because as you can see here, they've been giving this dividend for the last 35 years. Got a pretty solid five-year dividend growth rate of 9.5%. Parent ratio of 54.92%, and again, the yield is a little on the lower side at 1.77%. And the last company we're looking at is Raytheon Technologies Corporation, ticker symbol RTX, because the last one on the list, United Technologies, actually merged to become Raytheon Technologies. We can see here that in the last year, Raytheon is actually up in share price by 5%. Year to date, they're actually up a little bit more by 7.68%. We've got a PE just under 20 at 19.60 and a dividend yield of 2.35%. 
Looking at the dividends here, we can see we've got a B plus for safety. We've got Bs in both growth and yield and an A plus in dividend consistency. Raytheon gives us 28 years of dividend growth, a five-year dividend growth rate of 4.68%, and the payout ratio is under 50 at 46.09%. And again, that yield is 2.35%. Now here is how these nine companies that Ron had been investing in all his life stack up against one another in today's world. So feel free to take a screenshot. And remember Ron's lessons. Live below our means, spend mindfully, read about and study the market and invest, diversify what we're investing in, buy what we understand, invest in companies that pay a dividend and then reinvest those dividends, buy and hold great companies forever. And most of all, we have to be patient. Now, I hope that this is helpful to you all and maybe you gain some inspiration from listening to a story about a man who worked hard all his life and surprised everyone who knew him when they learned that he had amassed a portfolio worth over $8 million. There's hope for us yet. So stay the course and check out this video next.